the previous exercises uh, raise an interesting question, which is how long should uh, the mark the MCMC chains run for? Or in other words, uh, how long should we run the, a model until it is ready to, to, to be used, namely to draw valuable inferences about the parameters of interest? This takes us to the issue of convergence and how do we assess convergence uh, when estimating Bayesian models or when estimating models in a Bayesian fashion using modern Bayesian computational approaches. One first way of assessing convergence is through uh, the visual inspection of the trace plots. And by trace plots, I mean the suc successive uh, parameter draws. So I mentioned when we uh, talked about the Gibbs sampler and we talked about the Metropolis Hastings algorithms, the idea was to draw samples of the parameters until we reach the steady state or stationary state uh, of the posterior distribution of the parameters. Okay, so how do we know that we have actually reached the steady state, the steady state distribution? So one way an informal way of checking its convergence or that the parameters have are reached, the parameters are being drawn from the stationary part of the chain is through the visual inspection of this, uh, the succession of parameter draws. So here you have a series of plots, each of which shows draws, parameter draws. Okay? Uh, some of these, show uh, that the parameters are being drawn from a stationary distribution, namely that the parameters, that the values of the parameters in successive, in subsequent draws are essentially similar. Take a look, for instance, at the upper left panel. However, if you look, say, at the upper right panel or any other panel except for the upper left one, we see that the each iteration yields values of the parameters that differ considerably from the previous one. So a well-mixed convergent uh, chain should look like this. So there are obviously some variations in the values of the parameters uh, we draw at each iteration of the algorithm, but not too much, right? So essentially uh, the values look or the, the chains look almost vertical and dense. This is a plot of a chain that has already converged. In contrast, this plot shows uh, that this chain has not converged. So there's still a lot of variation in each iteration of the, of the algorithm, be it a Gibbs sampler, be it uh, Metropolis Hastings, yields very different values of the, of the parameters, right? Now, this is as taking a look at the trace plots. So looking at the values of the parameters is one informal way of assessing conversion. There are, however, more formal approaches to assessing conversion, which depend essentially on which approach we use to uh, estimating a model. Essentially, there are, in a nutshell, two main uh, approaches to feeding a model in a Bayesian fashion. One is running one long chain, one okay, Gibbs sampler, one Metropolis Hasting algorithm, or a combination of both for a very long time. Another approach is running a series of shorter chains. So we can run three, say, chains, and uh, then assess the conversions of the three chains. And the criterion we use to assess conversions depends on which approach we use, right? Uh, typically, the second approach, that of running a series of different chains, chains each of them starting from different initial values, is the prevalent approach, is the one I, have, I use in my own research. Uh, but no matter which approach we use, the first part of 
any chain, be it we are running a single chain, MCMC, if we are running multiple chains, the first part of each chain is used as what we call a burning period, right? Essentially a period uh, that we use as a preparation or as a, or as a warm up that we are not going to use uh, to draw inferences for the parameters, but just we allow the chain enough time or enough iterations so as to reach the stationary state. This figure here, which essentially is a plot taken from the exercise we already conducted on uh, a, using Gibbs sampling to draw inferences about the mean and the variance of a normal distribution. This is a plot of uh, the values, the, the samples of mu drawn using Gibbs sampling. So that well, first before, at some point, the values start being stable around a certain value too, in this case. But before that, in this case, this steady state is reached quite fast. But before that, there are a series of values uh, that are quite off mark. Now, this first part is typically used as a burning. Now, the question is obviously, how do we know when we are fitting a model, how long the burning period is? Well, here the approach, uh, the approach is varies. Some people, some approach, some researchers use the first half of a chain. So suppose I'm running uh, the, uh, a Gibbs sampling algorithm for a thousand iterations. Well, we can use the first half of those thousand iterations or the first 500 iterations as burning. Uh, some other researchers use uh, shorter burning periods, a quarter. The, chain. the important is to not to use the first 25, 50% of the chain uh, to draw inferences, but rather using it as a burning period. Now, going back to the issue of convergence criteria, when we run a single chain for a long period, there are two main convergence criteria. Quebec's criterion and Heidel's criterion. I'm not going to go uh, into too much detail about it, but the idea is to compare the first part of that single chain after the burning period to the last part of that chain. And essentially the idea is, well, if the values sampled in the first few iterations of the algorithm post burning and the values sample towards the end of the chain do not differ very much. Well, we can be reasonably sure, and, I, and the key here is reasonably sure, that the parameters are being drawn from a stationary part of the chain. So suppose uh, we are running a chain for a thousand iterations and we use the first 200 iterations as burning. Well, if the first 100 iterations post burning, so the values sampled from uh, the 200th first to the 300th uh, iteration are reasonably similar to the values sampled at the iterations 900 to 1000, well, we can be reasonably confident that uh, the chain has or the algorithm has converged. A little bit more formally, for instance, Gebeke's criter criterion, what it does is take the first 10% of the chains or of the values sampled post burning against and compare it against the last 50% of the sample value and perform a sort of T type of test. Right? And if the test statistics are outside the minus Point, uh, 1.96 to 1.96 range, well, if that indicates a lack of convergence. Otherwise, if the test statistics are within that, uh, uh, those values, we can be reasonably confident that the chain has converged. All these diagnostics, Gebeke and Heidel, are uh, available, readily readily available in R through the color package. And you have some exercises here uh, and, and 
an R script in which I perform uh, I use the Heidel criterion to assess uh, conversions. When instead of running one long chain, chain we run a series of shorter chains. Uh, the most widely used criterion to assess conversion is Gelman's and Rubin's R hat. Again, the slides go a little bit, go more in detail about what exactly this R hat does, but essentially what we, what it does is compare the variability of the sample values within a ch each chain and between uh, chains. In order to compute a certain measure, R hat, and if the value of this R hat is below 1.2, 1.1, uh, we can be reasonably certain that the different chains have converged. Again, Gelman, this R hat diagnostic is readily available in R, and you have a script uh, that uses uh, this R hat criterion to assess conversions uh, in the case of a Gibbs sampler with multiple chain. Let me also say that this whole notion of conversions is uh, there's a lot of debate about when can we absolutely sure that uh, a chain has converted or a series of chains has converted. The short answer is probably never, but uh, in practice, people, researchers applying Bayesian methods uh, take this criterion where the R hat is below 1.2 or when the idols criterion is between the test statistic is between minus 1.96 to 1.96, we can reasonably assume that uh, we have reached conversions. <laughs>